Well, what's going on, gang? A uh, little different video for you folks this weekend. So last video, you guys just saw that I was uh, had the truck and the camper down the street uh, putting on a new hitch. And I don't have any camping trips planned right now. And so I figured the camper's there. Let's uh, let's just go hang out in it for the night. So I got, I got some things packed up. I've got quite a few things that I've bought that uh, I need to put on the camper inside. So I figured this would be a good little trip for me to take some of this stuff to the camper, kind of work on it by myself while I'm there. Uh, the wife isn't too, too excited about it probably, but I'm gonna hang out in the camper tonight and we're gonna have a little camping episode tonight in the RV by myself. Haven't slept in the camper by myself yet, so this will be a, uh, this will be a trip. Now, the camper doesn't have 30 amp service where it's at, so in order to hopefully run at least one of the small AC units, I did bring one of my big batteries and we're gonna see if I can get something kind of finagled in terms of uh, stepping down the 50 amp, 50 amp to 30 amp connections to my big battery. So maybe we can hopefully have uh, a little bit of air conditioning tonight, but I gotta figure all that out when we get there and I get the batteries hooked up. But uh, it'll be a little experiment, it'll be fun. I got quite a few things to do uh, on the RV, so we'll see you folks when we get there. All right, gang. Well, this should look very familiar to you if you watched the last video. So we're back here where I'm where I'm storing my camper for the for the time being. Unfortunately, it's not uh, it is not permanent. But I got a couple of things that I got to figure out because we have imminent rain coming in. Uh, it's been raining for three weeks straight. So, like I said, I brought my batteries right here. And I think we got enough juice. So I've got my AC 300 and two of the B300 batteries. So that's like 6,000 something watts. So I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is, is that that's only got a 30 amp input. My RV is a 50 amp and it's way back there. So, and I can't keep those batteries outside in the event that it's gonna rain, uh, unfortunately. So I've gotta try to maybe sneak them under here in the garage, but I hope I have the right adapters to go from 50 to 30 amp to connect to that power station. My 50 amp cord's plenty long enough to get under here, but I only have a 10 foot 30 amp cord. And so I'm gonna have to go dig around and figure out what kind of adapters I can come up with to kind of step down the 50 amp to the 30 amp so I can plug in my power station. Because if I can't plug that in, there's no other, there's no other way to power this other than just the 12 volt accessories. And I at least want fans going on up there in the RV. Even if I can't get that condenser to cut on, at least I can use the fan function to have some kind of air movement. But I'm gonna get these batteries taken out. I'm gonna set them up in here. And then I'm gonna show you folks how, I, hopefully I'll find a way to do it. Um, and I did bring 1100 watts worth of solar panels, but it's just, it's been pure clouding this all day long. So I don't think those are gonna help me. I'm gonna stick them out anyway, just to kind of squeeze out some of that, whatever solar I can find with 1100 watts worth of pan, no, I'm sorry, a thousand watts worth of panels. But anyway, I'm gonna get this set up and then we're gonna go inside. I got a lot of movies. I got a lot of things to put up in the RV inside. So uh, I'm gonna definitely stay busy, but I need to get this stuff in and out of the rain before that happens. Okay, here's my bag of all kinds of cables and adapters. So this is the only 30 amp cord that I have that goes, I've already got a dog bone on it, that goes into my camper. And this is only about 10 feet long. So I'm gonna dig through here and see what all I have. That just goes to 15 amps. Yep, I'm gonna dig through all this, all these goodies and see what I can find. So I've got it set up in here. Uh, you can see I got my two big batteries, 3000 watt, the AC 300, which means it's got 3000 watts worth of output. I do have it connected uh, all together. And here's the solar that I planned on using. It's got two MPPT controllers. So I can hook up two different panels that's gonna go into there for like up to 2400 watts, way more than what I have. But I've got this in the garage again because it's gonna rain. So I gotta find a cord from 50 amp all the way down here to this 30 amp uh, RV output to hopefully power up my camper. So I'm gonna get through all of this stuff in here and figure out how we're gonna make this happen, guys. Uh, I'm gonna try to use my 50 amp cable with all of this good stuff. So I'll let you know what I come up with 
when uh, I can get my brain from being unscrambled. That wasn't terrible. So let me show you folks how I kind of have this, this, this figured out, I guess, to the best that I can, I can do. So I got my 50 amp cable coming out, going down. I've got a little adapter that goes from 50 amp to 30 amp. Then I've got my little 30 amp RV cord that's just 10 feet going right into the AC 300, okay? So let's get this thing powered on. AC on. And I believe I'm gonna have to get inside the RV and cut off that converter because I don't want it charging my tongue battery, which looks like it is right now, 60 watts. So let's go inside the coach or the RV, whatever you wanna call it. Oh, and I'm also gonna try this. If I can't get that AC to start, I've got this little soft start thing from Active Start. I've had that for a couple of years now and I've never really had to use it, to be honest. So might be a good time now. See if it works. There we go. Home sweet home for the night. Okay. I don't know why I get nervous every time I push out the slide. I just feel like something's gonna break. Knock on wood. All right, so that's on. Now let me see if I need to cut off, if I've got a fuse for the converter. Converter. So I'm gonna cut this off. Ah, that's what I was worried about. So, maybe one of you guys that know more about this than I do, I figured I just had to cut the converter off because I don't want that battery charging my tongue battery. Uh, in all the videos I've watched, people just flip their converter fuse off when they're running it off a power station uh, just to alleviate that fact. You know, I don't need to charge my tongue battery if I'm using my Blue Eddy out there. But when I cut the converter off, it cuts all the 12 volt appliances off. So I don't know if that's the way that this thing's wired. Um, I don't know. But... So that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe I can go... I'm pretty sure that my battery... I have it turned off anyway. Okay, well, my cutoff switch is turned off, so I really shouldn't be charging any... I, I shouldn't be charging the battery. At least, if that's how I wired this, that's how it would work. But when I go to flip that fuse, or that circuit, when I go kill, uh, close that circuit, all my 12 volt stuff dies. So I'm going to keep that on. And if I'm charging batteries, I'm charging batteries. Well, let's see if we can at least get some air. So we're going to go fan. So fan only. Let's go to fan. All right. So I just have both fans on just to get some airflow moving in here because it's pretty, it's so humid out here. Here in Texas, it's rained for, it seems like three weeks straight, but at least I know I can get some airflow. Let's see what that's doing in terms of, it shouldn't be pulling anything. Oh gosh, 805 watts. That's quite a bit just to keep those fans running. So I'm gonna get these solar panels put out. I know it's not gonna do much good, but I'll still be able to squeeze a little bit out, even though it's cloudy. So let's get that going. So I got my big 600 watt power station or uh, solar panel here. And then I got that new, uh, let's see, Renogy 400 watt panel that I think I just did a video on my other channel. So I'm gonna get both of these set up and hopefully supplement that battery with these giant AC units that are taking a lot of energy right now, just off the fan. All right, starting to sweat a little bit, but I got the Renogy 400 watt panel hooked up here to my solar. 
And again, this thing takes two different arrays. So I've got it hooked up to one set going in up there. And those 400 watts right now, yeah, they're only giving me, it's only giving me 135 watts. So, but I also have this 600 watt panel down here on the ground. And guys, you can actually make uh, solar cables out of your low voltage uh, landscape wire. And this is just 10 gauge landscape wire that I uh, crimped on some MC4 connectors. So much cheaper than buying actual PV cables if you want to do, uh, do a DIY. But so this is 600 watts laying on the ground, 400 watts. And we're going to get this hooked up to the second MPPT and see what we can get. Connect these. These up to the second set. Now let's see what we're doing. Now I bumped it up a little bit. Come on, 400. Ah, there we well, go. 402 watts. It's not terrible. I can actually check. So off the 400 watt panel, I'm getting 165 watts, 38 volts. Off of the 600 watt panel, I'm getting 45 volts, 253 watts. Go back. So, yeah, 458 watts off of <laughs> almost 1,000 watts of solar. Whew, it's hot. Now I'm, you know I'm curious, guys, if I can get one of these AC units to start. So what I'm gonna do, I know this is kind of a weird video, but I got my iPad here because I can actually, I can connect to that Blue Eddy and I'm gonna connect to it inside here and kind of show you folks the amount of draw that these AC units take. Cause you can, you can watch it real time. Oh, okay. So this big guy up here is 15K BTU. The little one in here is 13.5 BTU. You guys want to try the 15K? Let's let's give the 15K. Let's give it a go. There we go. All right. So now you can actually probably see better. I'm getting 410 watts from solar. Battery's at 98%, and I'm running 805 watts right now just off of the fan. So let's see if this thing will start an AC unit. But I'm going to turn it up a little bit. I don't want to go crazy. So let's go to, let's go to cool, low. Oh, there we go. 1.7 kilowatts. Holy smokes, it's running it. Wow. Let's go, let's make it a little cooler. I'm gonna turn this off. Let's see, off. One, 1,700 watts. Nice, that is cool air. If I was getting more solar, this would be uh, doable for, for you know most of the day, but that solar is kind of killing me. Well, I gotta be honest, I'm surprised that that AC300 could kickstart a 15K BTU. I didn't think it would. I thought that I would have to hook up that soft start little surge protector thing that I have, but it works fine. So I'm just gonna let this run long enough to kind of cool off the interior, and then I'm just gonna run some fans, probably until tonight when I, I like to be cold when I sleep, because I don't wanna waste all my batteries on this big giant air conditioning unit. But guys, I'm gonna kind of get everything in here situated, sorted out. Make sure the fridge is turned on. And it's not. Let's see. There we go. And I don't need a freezer. So let's turn that to min, just so I'm not wasting energy. And we're going down a little bit. Well, we're still at 1600 watts. Only only 190 watts worth of solar off of a thousand watts worth of panels outside. I picked a bad day to try to do this, guys. 
Uh, but anyway, like I said, I gotta go unpack my truck, get it all in here. I've got some movies to watch tonight. Uh, I'll have to figure out what to do for dinner. I'm either gonna run to the store and get some food. I'm gonna order some takeout, go pick it up, eat it here. Cause I don't know how messy I wanna get the, the kitchen area for dinner, but I'm gonna show you folks what I got for my Starlink. Uh, the setup to put the router and the or the modem or whatever and the power brick that you have to have to use i got a little thing off of etsy that i'm going to install here on the wall i'm gonna get all that stuff put up and i got quite a few things to kind of tinker with here tonight inside the coach so stay tuned y'all this is going to be fun for me i don't know i don't know how it's going to be for y'all but uh i don't know i love being in this rv i love the whole rv scene just feels like home in here i love it so guys we'll see you we'll see you soon lights go and i do just want to go check one more thing just to make sure that uh my battery is going to do me well but i think if i just run it for maybe 10 or 15 minutes an hour that'll be fine so yeah <laughs> only 143 watts of solar right now 1645 watts and I do not have anything connected to the grid, so this is all going to be, tonight, is all going to be these batteries. So this should be fun. Be my own little personal experiment here, but man, if we had any better sun, that's a lot of, that's a lot of solar. And it's just kind of laying out there being wasted, but I don't know. Still going to be fun. We'll see you folks in a little bit. All right, gang. Well, let me get some more lights on. Sitting at 89% battery, I just cut the AC back on. Let some more uh, cool air back up, back up in here. And tell me, gang, am I the only one, uh, if anyone watching has an RV, that in their home, they have a section in their home that's got RV stuff just piled up in the corner. We always end up having this little section in our home of stuff that we just put in this corner and say, oh, we'll put that in the RV next time we take it out. Every single time I end up with this pile of stuff that I've got to put up. Either stuff that we, uh, like towels and stuff that we needed to wash last time we took it out, or stuff that I, you know, buy. Uh, we did get some, we got, we're gonna try the baby powder and cinnamon mixture for ants. So uh, we, last time we were out, we, there was a lot of ants around our tires and I could see them crawling up our tires. So a little bit of research uh, said to mix some baby powder and some just regular cinnamon, kind of sprinkle that around the tires. There's a lot of other things that work, but this was the easiest to pick up at Walmart. So we got a couple of things of baby powder and some cinnamon to use. Uh, next time we're out, we'll be we running to some ants. The all important ant, roach, and spider killer. Gonna go in here. And then just some miscellaneous, uh, I, got, I got tape, I got more clevis pins. What is this? See, half this stuff, I don't even know what it is. What is this? Oh. <laughs> I brought a, a TDS meter. I wanted to test the water uh, next time we actually use it when we're hooked up to campground water because I got a different filter. I got a five micron filter to use next time we're at camp instead of that blue campco cooler that's like a hundred micron i don't know it's it's not really a filter but everyone uses that blue one and i did too because i saw everyone using it but i got the it's a green filter i can't remember what it's called but it's supposed to filter down to five microns and not really affect water pressure i don't know how that's going to work but we're going to give it a go and then just some uh some tape some more tools probably that i don't need in there just like all this other stuff That'll all go under the bed. And this has been my wife's favorite thing. We've had this since our very first RV. It's a collapsible, I guess like uh, she uses it to wash dishes, but we end up using it actually for everything around here. And it just kind of folds up and pops into place. And we stick it underneath our cabinet. Doesn't take up any room, but that's been with us forever. What are these? Oh, I got some LED little solar torch looking things. They might be kind of cheesy, but uh, I saw some some people using them last time we went camping, and the kids liked them. I liked them, and they look kind of cool, so I bought them. Obviously, I'm not going to use them here, but these are just the LED solar torch lights. So I got to find a home for these. 
I printed out, man, I'm a dork. I printed out some uh, little labels to put on our antenna and cable inputs because I keep getting them confused on what's what. So I'm going to get these printed off and stuck up there. And then the main thing that I wanted to put up today, I got this on Etsy and this is for the, the Starlink like modem. Because that has to stay inside. Obviously the Starlink dish itself is outside. Man, they're not kidding around with these, are they? But it's just a 3D printed, it's just a 3D printed little holder and the modem goes in one side and then the battery slides, or not the battery, but the, uh, the, the, the charging brick, I believe goes underneath. I don't have my, my dish here, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed on the wall just using some uh, simple command strips, which are, I guess, the RV family's best friend command strips everywhere in here but last time we used the Starlink it was just hanging out there on the floor cords were everywhere it drove me crazy so I went to Etsy and I found this to hopefully get all of that stuff up off the floor and I'm going to put probably somewhere somewhere right here just to get it again up off the floor and then I got my my 120 outlet down here that I actually plug all the stuff in to give that stuff the interior stuff power so that's probably going to go here so we're going to get this installed tonight what else? Do, oh, here's the, I did bring it. So here's the filter. So clear 2.0 RV and Marine inline water filter. And again, most of the ones, I've only used the blue filter, but we got this to try. And it is supposed to go down fast flow five microns. We'll see if it works, but I'm gonna stick this actually back outside with all of our water stuff. I don't need it in here. And an air fryer, because who doesn't have an RV without an air fryer? So I think we're actually going to use end up using this way more than the microwave, because we use this at home way more than our microwave too. So I got a little cheap one. This one was only like 49 bucks, and uh, it worked well. I used it on a couple of videos ago, air frying some boneless chicken wings, and it worked great. So we're going to keep this here in the RV, because uh, it doesn't make things soggy, especially for the kids with chicken nuggets. Right, they don't like uh, soggy, soggy chicken nuggets, so th these keep them crispy. I don't know what we ever did without command strips. But every single one that I've put up in here to hang up whatever uh, has not fallen yet. Again, knock on wood. But I'm hoping, because this is gonna be fairly, fairly heavy. So I'm thinking somewhere about there. All right. That'll be much cleaner next time we actually have the, the Starlink set up. So good for that. All right, so next thing we got to get done since I'm here is I got to go set up my truck for this camper, which I've never done. Oh, it's going to get bright. But I got to go input all of the, the length, the height, the width, all that good stuff in here on the new truck. So when we're towing it, uh, it, it helps, especially with the backup. So I'm going to show you folks how that gets done on these new trucks or any Ford, really. But now that I got all that info with me, I can finally set this thing up. All right, so we're gonna go into towing, add a trailer, trailer name. We'll just make it uh, KZ. Connect. Trailer type, conventional, save. Continue to set up, yes. Default for braking. Trailer brake effort, medium. All right, the length of my trailer, length from the ball to the trailer's rear bumper is, I believe, 31 feet, so 30, 32 feet. So we're gonna go 32 feet. The width is eight feet. 
enter. I think that's about it. So let's see. Pro trailer backup assist, trailer angle limit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do max angle, which means I might have to pull forward. This will let my, my trailer uh, almost jackknife. Obviously, of course, not a full jackknife, but it, it gives me a little bit more turning angle backing up than if I just put normal control. So we're gonna keep it there. Trailer blind spot, confirm. I don't think I can do this yet until I have the trailer connected. So that's pretty much it, gang. That's uh, that's how that's how you set up the trailer, and uh, there's quite a few things on here you can do. So of course, if you have more than one trailer, they'll all be listed here. You can check the lights. You can actually do this from your phone, but you can stand behind the trailer while it's connected to the truck to make sure that the lights are working. I'm sure that's nothing new for Ford, but pretty cool little feature. I got the sway control on and the maintenance reminders I have turned off. I don't need that to tell me what I need to do. So now I got the trailer set up. <laughs> Next thing is, is getting this thing hooked up and actually taking it on a trip. Hopefully in about two weeks, we'll be, uh, be able to take this thing out the first time with the new truck, the new hitch. Can't wait. I got everything set up now. Everything is good to go. So we are ready to head out hopefully soon on this first little trip with this new setup. But gang, I'm getting pretty hungry. So I'm gonna take a minute to figure out what I wanna do for dinner. I don't know if I'm gonna go get something to eat, order something, uh, cause I don't think I wanna cook in that, in that camper tonight. Just don't feel like it. So I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna stew on that for a little while and then uh, we'll be back. Stay tuned. Well, the solar is basically non-existent at this point in time. It's around 6.30 and we just have nothing. But this, this setup seems to be working still pretty well. I am at 78% now. Uh, I'm getting 76 watts worth of solar. 96 of the AC grid going into that camper from the battery. So it's still holding steady. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be fun to see tonight once I get in there because I am gonna run the AC. I'll probably set it to around 78 degrees to see how long that'll, that'll keep it running for. But I'm hoping when the temperature drops, the AC is not going to have to run as hard because, you know, sitting at 78%, again, that thing's got 6,000 watts worth of juice in those batteries. So I think we're going to be cutting it kind of close to run this. That's why running air conditioning units off grid is, is really difficult, guys. It's, it's, you know, typically you need a gas generator. Uh, if you don't, these, you know, LiPo 4 batteries, you got to carry a lot of them with you and they're heavy and, uh, you know, air conditioning units just takes up so much space, just takes up so much uh, energy to keep these things running. But it's comfortable in here right now. We're at 77 degrees inside, so that's not too bad. That's, that's very doable. But... Well, needless to say, I think solar is done for the day. It is raining out there, uh, so I'm not going to be getting anything else in terms of solar to help out these batteries. So let's see where we're sitting right now. 78%, not too bad. Looks like we're pulling around still 100 watts or so. Now I did turn the fan off because it's pretty comfortable in here. Still 77 degrees, but again, no more solar for the rest of this little experiment. Uh, I didn't get much, uh, let's be honest, when I did have them set up, but any, any bit helps, especially when you're trying to keep these batteries prolonged as long as you can. But that is now over, and it's, I think, just supposed to, to rain even more than what it is now, uh, pretty much for the rest of the night. So, so yeah, fun little experiment, at least for me. I don't know how, how, how it is for you folks on the other side of this camera, but, uh, but doing stuff like this, uh, I think, is fun because it kind of helps me realize what you can and can't do. So here in just maybe an hour or two, it's going to be dark, and then, uh, then we'll really start kind of relaxing and, and having just a chill little evening here in the RV, all by myself with the wife at home taking care of two crazy kiddos. So, thanks, honey. All right. Don't tempt me with a good time at an all-you-can-eat salad buffet. This is about eight pounds of salad. I don't know if you folks have a uh, Jason's Deli where you're from, but uh, it is the, it's the best 
like salad bar around here. I got all kinds of goodies. And uh, I definitely get my money's worth when I go when I go in here. It's kind of embarrassing filling up my uh, my to-go containers all by myself, but uh, I'll let you look to see what I managed to shovel in. <laughs> it's embarrassing. But it's still raining, it's still nasty. So we're headed back. We're headed back to camp, guys. <laughs> so hopefully I think my batteries are doing fine still. I left they were around 70%. So I should have enough to get me through the night, and I just went the wrong way coming out of here. That's not good. Okay. Little 7.3 V8 gets up and goes. And it breaks pretty well too. Sweet home. <laughs> I'm not kidding, this salad weighs about 10 pounds. All right, let's get in here and cut the AC back on. Get some lights going. See what our battery is doing. Not bad. Oh, 74%. I think that'll get me through the night. We'll try. We'll see, obviously, but I'm gonna get the TV set up and I'm probably gonna eat over here on the couch. Uh, because we got the equalizer. I've probably seen it 20 times, but but it's a darn good movie. Alright, normally I would have Starlink to uh kind of watch movies, but I, I didn't bring my Starlink, so I'm just using on this particular TV, and I do sometimes have problems, but I can use my iPad and this little Apple adapter that goes to an HDMI. Um, but it all depends on what platform you're using. Netflix works to do that. Uh, some of my little apps that I use won't let me broadcast movies to a TV, which is just silly. But we'll try to see if this works tonight, hopefully. And we'll go directly to the equalizer. Looks like it's gonna work. Wow. I want to present to you guys the unhealthiest salad you've probably ever seen in your life but it's gonna be oh so good. Got some pasta, some kind of muffins. I don't know what they are, but they're good. Some silverware. Well, gang, I, uh, I absolutely got my money's worth on this meal. I am more than stuffed. I'm going to probably take this out to the trash. Finish up my uh, Equalizer movie. And then we're going to call it a night. But I'll check in before uh, we head to bed. Kind of give you an update on where the battery stands. And uh, we'll go from there. 
Oh. <clears throat> well, gang, I'm not gonna lie, but this weather is uh, making me... I'm tired, but I told you folks I would go out and show you this night this night camera again. But I'll tell you, I haven't uh, I haven't even seen an ant today. Obviously, the uh, the rain is scaring everything away. But I was hoping that I could at least see a squirrel or something before it got crazy dark, so you guys could kind of see a better view of this. But. Truck's nice and warm. Let's go try across the street. I don't know. There's got to be some living creature out here that I could show you. I would think. Oh well. Well, I just cut on. I'm gonna take a quick gander at the battery one more time before we head off inside and get the uh, the small AC cut on. I'm just gonna sleep with the 13.5 BTU, but we are at, that's kinda hard to come through, but 66%. And right now, whatever I'm using is pulling 100 watts out, so. I think, guys, I think I'm gonna call it a night, but let's go in here and get that, let's get that small AC cut on. Let me cut this thing off because it's not doing us any good right now. Let me take one more gander. Some kind of electrical box. It's got some heat on it. I'm beat. No shoes in the house. Let's put these down. I did plan on watching a movie. You guys, I'm just tired. There we go. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Set it to about 78. There we go. She kicked on. Yeah, that pulls. Yeah, so the difference between a 13.5 BTU AC and a 15K BTU AC is about 600 watts, at least here on my camper because right now I'm only pulling, I'm pulling about a thousand, well, I'm pulling 1100 watts right now, but I was running a hundred watts off of just residual stuff in here. So yeah, that, that 13.5 pulls around a thousand. This big guy here, uh, it normally pulls around 1600. At least that's what it was doing today. So gang, it's been fun. It's been real. It's been different, but oh, I forgot how comfortable this bed is. Ugh. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the hay gang. I'm gonna wake up early, and hopefully, we'll still be having some some AC running. Uh, I, I might even end up turning it off tonight because it's gonna get fairly cool. So, uh, so gang, there's not much else to, uh, not much else to, to discuss here. This was just an experiment. I had the camper here; it was available. So I wanted to come out here and test that uh, that Blue Eddy to see how long, or mainly just to see if uh, it would work on these AC units, and it did it just fine. Not even a hiccup, so. I reckon I could probably get at least a full day, uh, 24 hours, with some solar running this AC unit. So, because I am running my fridge. That's what was running, that's the 100 watts. I got my fridge going, I forgot about that. So anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Morning guys and girls. So well we made it gang. It is oh I think it's six in the morning. 
Let me see here. What time is it? 6.20 a.m. And I've still got power, gang. And I'll be honest, I am I'm surprised at this result. Let me show you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm such a nerd with this. I've got 52% battery remaining on oh, those batteries. So I cut the main, I cut the 15K BTU off. I kept the 13.5 BTU here in the bedroom. I set it to like 78. And uh, it's 68 degrees in here right now, if you can see that. That top number. So it didn't have to run a lot. But it did cycle on and off quite a bit throughout the night. Maybe, I say quite a bit, maybe four or five times. Ran for about 10, 15 minutes each time. But, uh... I'm surprised only 50% of that battery is, is done. So, so I did kind of figure out my converter thing that I mentioned in the first of the video. Um, when I went out to the tongue of the trailer and I actually cut the battery on with the shutoff switch, that, that converter slash charger did start charging the battery and I was pulling around 250, 270 watts. So when I cut the shutoff switch off on the tongue, of course it stopped charging the battery. So I guess on my rig, I don't flip that breaker. I just have to turn the battery off up from the tongue so it doesn't start charging. So my Blue Eddy doesn't start charging the battery on the tongue of the trailer. So, I don't know. I've seen a few videos where folks just simply, you know, flip that breaker and it stops charging. But that is a converter also. So it converts 12 volts to AC. So I knew that didn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know. I'm rambling. It's 6 in the morning. But... I figured it out. That's really all that matters. So, gang, I'm gonna I'm gonna pack up. There's not a whole lot to pack up. Uh, I didn't even sleep under the main blankets. I just used this thing uh, because the wife made this all nice and neat, and I didn't wanna I didn't wanna mess it up. But we're gonna put this. Let me get some lights going on. Oh, I can cut this off. Oh, that's bright. Oh, that's way too bright. So, gang, that's a... Uh, I know that wasn't a true camping video. It was more of a, uh, like I said, experiment. I just wanted to test that that Blue Eddy out to see how long I, it would work. Uh, and I'm surprised how long it did work. So, yeah. So, guys, next week, I don't know if you've made it this far. This might have bored you guys to death. But uh, this week, on Thursday, I'm heading out for a two-night true dispersed camping trip out to what we call the Lyndon B. Johnson grasslands. And we're going to be hooking up with my buddy Ben from the Simper Gumpy channel again this year uh, for two nights. So he's driving all the way down and meeting us here in Texas. And so of course, again, I'm doing my first dispersed camp uh, without a truck camper. I, I, I've had a truck camper for two plus years. And of course, now when I don't have anything is when we're doing it. So it'll be fun. I don't know I haven't even figured out how I'm going to sleep in the truck yet. Probably find, try to find some kind of pop-up truck bed tent or something, but that's going to be this weekend. So two nights uh, of no electricity whatsoever uh, at LBJ Grasslands. And then uh, I've got one more mod that I'm putting on the truck Monday. And then I'm going to show you folks everything that I've done to the truck so far. I think I've counted like 23 mods. I, I call them mods. I've done 23 things to the truck. Uh, that I've added to it. Nothing crazy, but just little things that uh, I want to show you folks because I, I think for me it makes it just a little bit better. But I got one more big one that I'm gonna that I'm going to get installed Monday. And then as soon as that's done, I'll make a video and kind of go over all the mods that I've done on the truck and then give you a better walk around of the truck because I didn't really show it in the first video. But that's the plan for this week. So gang, that's a wrap. I'm gonna get all this stuff, all the stuff. I've got one bag. And uh, I'm going to head home and help my wife with the kids this morning because she so graciously let me come here and be silly out here. But the sun's just now starting to come up. So, so again, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you this weekend.
if, if all goes well. So thanks for tuning in, gang. I don't know what this video is all about, but uh, I had fun. So gang, if you made it this far, thanks. Thanks for watching. I know it was kind of weird, but I enjoyed it. I had fun. I like hanging out in here, whether I'm at a true campground or not. It was still fun for me, so. And I keep losing light, but. All right, I'm out. I'm done blabbing. See you next week. Thanks for watching.